Welcome back. It is time for the Word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money. Joining me right now is Michael Lee, strategy founder, Michael Lee, and with us all morning long, Chris Markowski. Uh, great to see you, Mike. Thanks for joining the conversation. Chris, kicking things off with your thoughts. And what about the budget talks? Inching forward, President Biden and House Speaker McCarthy planning to meet again tomorrow. Markets are uh, rallying this morning. Is that on some optimism that a debt deal could be imminent? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not sure how these debt talks are going to play out. I'd imagine um, there is some sort of negotiated settlement. Uh, but I would say we are in 0% chance of default. There's more than enough money coming into the Treasury to, co to cover interest on debt, Social Security, Medicare, and the defense budget with a little bit of money left over. So if there is any sort of structural default, it is 100% the choice of the Biden administration and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. And I think the trading around this um, is, is theater and, and somewhat nonsense. Nonetheless, it, it's dominating the headlines. Um, I, I would say, uh, looking into these retail earnings and the retail sales that are coming out, I'd be looking, first of all, in retail sales, at the revisions, because we've seen a lot of revisions from everything coming out of the BLS and their seasonal adjustments with half of the job growth over the last 12 months from their birth death statistical adjustment, not real uh, jobs being created, simply just moving numbers around a spreadsheet. I'd look for more of that chicanery in this retail uh, sales number coming out. But you are starting to see some cracks in the surface of the upper end spending, as Chris just mentioned from the Bank of Chris just mentioned from the Bank of America credit card report. So what are we going to hear from Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's about things going forward? How, what does their guidance look like? Because we've started to see cracks in the labor market uh, over the last few weeks with the weekly is jumping substantially um, and then starting to see some higher continuing claims. Is that uh, rolling over into the higher end consumer that is really fueling our economy? And even though we have seen earnings declines year over year and these talks of recession, you haven't really seen that flow through to the consumer, even though con consumer sentiment is at pan below where it was during the depths of the pandemic. So, it, it, you know, I'm looking to see what we are, what you're hearing going forward. And given all the drama in the banking sector, uh, with the bank failures we've had and the stress uh, that we've seen throughout the industry, the contraction in credit conditions, that is going to spill over to the economy. I, I would say a recession is unavoidable with everything in the plumbing of the financial sector looking very similar to 2008. I think the key difference is, though, it's not because these banks own toxic assets. It's because you're seeing a deposit flight out of these banks, and no bank yeah. can handle a run on the bank. So I, I don't know that this will be as calamitous as 2008, but I, I, it's hard for me to see us avoiding some type of recession. Uh, maybe it's shallow. Maybe it's a little bit deeper than, than a shallow recession. But credit conditionings are tightening across the board that yeah. has historically led to a recession 10 times out of 10 so we'll see where we go from here equities may soldier through or um, if you do see some big sell-offs as Chris mentioned it's an opportunity to go bargain hunting for people that have more than say a six-month time horizon yeah and I'm glad you mentioned the banks we spoke with Robert Kaplan last week on this program on Friday the former president and CEO of the Dallas Federal Reserve and, and he said that right now, small banks are struggling and small business is struggling. Remember, the regionals lend to 90 percent of small business. And this week's a big week for this because on Wednesday, the House Financial Services uh, Committee will host the executives uh, of uh, Signature Bank as well as Silicon Valley Bank. That happens Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then on Thursday, bank regulators will testify before the Senate Banking Committee. That begins at 930. But probably the biggest meeting of the week is tomorrow's debt ceiling meeting. Uh, T.D. Cowan is writing about it today. They say that there are three issues that are forming a potential term sheet, uh, which could come out of a broader debt deal. The clawback of unspent COVID-19 funds, energy permitting reform po possible, both fossil fuel and green, and caps on future discretionary spending growth. That's, that's the expectation from the analysts at Cowan and company. Do you think we could get a deal, and would the markets react positively to that? First you, Chris. Mike, you think a deal will happen? Uh, you know, um, I, I don't think so. I, I think the, the Republicans hold all the cards here, and I think we've seen okay. very much uh, a new Kevin McCarthy since January, and I hope he digs his heels in and gets some meaningful spending cuts here because we are $32 trillion in debt, not including the $8 trillion on the Fed balance sheet. It is, yeah, uh, we are in point. dire straits, and stuff, something needs to happen. All right, Michael Lee, great to see you. Thank you. Chris, you're sticking with us all morning long. We're happy